the person who has gone there, he has gone there because he wants to change his glasses and because it is free for FO65, he thought, okay, he is doing it free, let me go and get my eyes tested there. And But after the eye test, he gets a bulldozer saying that you probably have cataract, oh, you may have glaucoma, you better undergo these tests, etc., etc. And finally, they land up with our good friend, the neighbor. So, that's what is happening. So ethics is very, very important. And ethics is not only in this part of acts, but ethics when it comes to managing our own. If you can't do something, you must tell your patient, look here, I'm not the person for this. There's some other person. There's nothing wrong. In our experience, we have seen that all this helps. Actually, the patient is, shows gratitude towards you because he has already seen three or four persons. And they are not giving him a proper opinion. And he has come to you. And then finally, after seeing you also, you also tell him something vaguely or give him some medicines. He goes to this next person. But then you give him the right direction. He brings you three or four more patients because they will tell him, they'll, he'll go and tell, look here, you go there, at least if he is not able to do it, he will suggest where to go. So by sending off patients, it doesn't really mean that you're going to lose your practice. This is a, actually a misconception. It's going to improve your practice. It's going to improve your image in the society. So this is very, very important, ethics. And I think this is what you all of you should do in your own, you know, in your own place. Tell others that ethics is very, very because these are all short-term gains. Long term doesn't really matter. Because in your practice, only 30% of your patients are new. 70% of your patients are old. You can make an analysis. 30% are new, 70% are old. And it's the old patients who are going to sustain your practice in the long run. The old patients are going to sustain your practice in the long run. And in corporate hospitals, the old patients are less. They are looking more and more for new patients. That's why they advertise. You don't need to advertise. You don't need to advertise because your old patients will be coming back to you. And as long as your old patients are coming back to you, you need not worry at all. Because even if 25% of these old patients bring you new patients, that's a big volume for you. So if you want your old patients to come back to you, ethics is very important. Communication, ethics, straightforwardness, etc. becomes very, very important. It is there in Dr. Kalam's study. Uh, he has got some of his quote. He specifically says this, don't give diagnostic pain to the patient. He says you charge him up and it pains him. <laughs> Tolerance. By tolerance, what we mean in medical profession is that you should be able to have the courage to face competition. When you start your practice, don't look at your the per person who is doing very well, you know, who is the boss in your place, or the man who is getting 100 patients a day, and look at him and try to look at him as your competitor. No, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't really work because he's been sitting there for ages. He's been sitting there for ages. He is the boss. You have to accept him. And don't look at him as your competitor. You are not your, his competitor. You want only probably 10 or 15 percent of his patients. And there are so many things that he, he will not be doing which probably you can do. So this is very, very important. Tolerance is very, very important. And this is where I think just like he said, jealousy. Jealousy and you know, greed. These are things unfortunately which is very, very rampant in the medical profession. Our own colleagues are our enemies, very often. This is very, very unfortunate. And there are two ways, like for example, I do not know who has said that. There are two ways that you can grow in the medical profession. One is by your own hard work that requires patience, time. The other one is to try to kill your competitor. It can happen in any profession. So by trying to kill your competitor, you may have immediate gains, but long term you are going to fail because it's not going to work. So tolerance is very, very important. In any industry now, there is competition. In any industry. And unfortunately, you know, in any of the other things, he'll say, ah, that fellow's thing. See, they come and talk to you and compare. Even now, for example, now, recently I saw an advertisement about a mid-segment car, which is number one. Now, he puts all the cars and then he tells his car is the best. Now, he can afford to do that. But we are professionals. We, should, we cannot compare. We cannot verbally say, look here. I am doing like this. Recently I had a talk in Cochin by one person from Mumbai. <laughs> but cataract shark, some shark from Burili. Okay. 
Like, yes, I don't know, I have not met him. I was there sitting there. But then he claims he is about 100% of the cases he can do cataract surgery without spectacles. There is multifocal lenses he is putting. And in 100% of the cases, and he, he has said that he has put that in his letterhead also. That's what he was telling in that meeting. Yogesh. In the letterhead, huh? Yogesh. No, no, Yogesh. Yogesh, I know him very well. Yeah, Jake Shah. Jake Shah. He said, I have put that in my letterhead also. He that I, I, I am a 100% multifocal something and 100% of my patients will not need glasses after uh, uh, surgery. So he said, because of that, Patients go to the other ophthalmologist and ask them, can you do what J.K. Shah does? Can you do? In Borivli, he says, other ophthalmologists are finding it difficult now. So, this is all I feel very unethical. You can uh, give your comments also. I mean, uh, basically about what I am telling. These are, I think, very, very unethical uh, practices. Isn't it? Do you agree with me on that? Yes. It's very unethical. I mean, I was sitting there in the audience, I listened to that talk, he spoke for more than an hour. It's some sort of a, it was a technical talk on some multifocal or something like that. I don't do cataract surgery. But then he, the last, when he said this, I was just looking at him. And he said, what guts this guy has got to write like that in the letterhead. And the best part of it is that is that people go to the, patients go to the other ophthalmologists and ask them whether you can do what? <laughs> so what was the very purpose of putting something like that? Because he says he is he is the hundred percent. He is almost driving them to the other person. No, no. One is this most confident of his surgery. Ah? So what is the rider? If he is like that, what is the rider? Hey, nothing is hundred percent. So so what he says is not true. Correct. So sir, he can just open himself up for. Uh, no, no, no. He is trying, uh, trying to claim one man up shape from other yeah, man. Just one of my ship. That's all. One man up shape. So, only people are telling, no? Yeah. Nobody like and that. Who's, and who's, 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 who's monitoring over it? That's yeah. the unfortunate part. There's no control, no monitoring. Yeah. The day it comes and then, obviously. Uh, no, I mean, I have been. They people huh? get away by, when they have problems, there are so many like said, I don't know, guys. They get away by telling anything. And I don't know how they manage the patients. Don't go back to them. They come to the others only after the complication. I mean, I so many things happen, I can't. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> you only asked why attendance, why only 12 are registered. Yeah. Attendance is very right. only, only could not come, but uh, overall, uh, many states, they are not very really active. Uh, that's why we have to do something to... Uh, they have to rejuvenate. Rejuvenate. LDP program. No, no, no. The members who are participating, they are sending representatives. Actually, these people also came, most of the people were uh, suggested by the LDP alumni. Correct. So it is not the secretaries of the state they are oh. sending. Actually, these stimulated to go to the secretary and apply through them. Except for the AP, they are uh, selecting far ahead of time and then he applied twice actually. <laughs> I made him apply in the last minute. Passion. So, uh, we are talking about leadership yeah. in the medical profession. And Nati gave a very exhaustive <laughs> one hour talk. And uh, some of the books that he mentioned, I think, are worth reading. I mean, uh, if you have not read them, and probably you can buy them when you're on your way back in the airport. They don't cost much. So, uh, now, uh, Nati again spoke about passion. And uh, your desire determines your destiny. Now, passion, I think, I just showed you this particular advertisement. Passion, I think, is very, very important, especially when you want to take risks, when you want to innovate, when you want to start something new. I think this is very, very important. I think uh, in your profession, I feel in our profession, every year we must do something new. It's very, very important. Something new, something different. Either a change in a procedure or your practice from what is happening or some new thing has to be developed. This is very, very important. 